to record okay <laughs> okay well um good morning everybody uh, thanks for waiting a little bit so there was some technical issue so um today presentation uh today laboratory uh, will be about um two tests well actually there are more than two tests so just two like major um experiments that we do in uh, geotechnical engineering uh, the one is soil compaction, and then we're gonna look at some plasticity uh, tests, which is liquid limit, plastic limits, and the linear shrinkage test. So this is what we will do for today, and we'll look at some data, and we we'll also look um, how to analyze the data. Um, again, before we start, just to I uh, want to make sure that you guys all know that on Friday we're gonna have uh, online quiz uh, quiz number one uh, yeah we we'll have two quizzes uh, each 10 percent um, worth I already send your email and I think I explain what is going to be in the quiz um, everything that we have started uh, by um, start from week, week to five yeah yeah so uh, everything that we have started um, started till I would probably will say week six because today during the lecture we will practice a little bit more what we um, studied last week like um, um, hydraulic gradient, critical hydraulic gradient. So we'll do a little bit of more practice today and then we will move on to next items like um, different types of flow that will not going to be in the quiz um, on Friday. So what we have studied by like last week and plus this week, maybe first uh, half of the lecture, we'll practice a little bit more. So that will be uh, on the quiz. The quiz consists of 10 questions. Um, there are a few questions, multiple choice, um, and few questions. Uh, uh, you will need to do some calculations and write your answer in the, like, like a box. Like, you, well, I think uh, you've done all these online quizzes already. You know how it works. So the quiz uh, questions um, some of them will be something similar to what we do during tutorials and during uh, classes uh, like our lectures so um, and uh, if you can just have time please um, uh, review the material uh, what you can do just either listen to all the recordings or listen to all those uh, short videos that I upload on YouTube or uh, I mean, not or and uh, also go through those um, lecture notes and the course notes. That uh, big file with course notes, it will um, give you all the kind of like brief summary of uh, all our lectures and um, also some uh, uh, problems with examples, how to solve them. So that should be helpful. Uh, so that's about the quiz and um, uh, the laboratory quiz uh, number three, the one that we have every other week. So we're not going to have it this week because this week on Friday we have this 10% worth quiz. So the laboratory quiz will be next Friday, which is postponed. So uh, also next week um, there is no uh, sort of lectures, labs and tutorials. But on Tuesday, we have scheduled a lecture for you. Uh, it's a guest lecture. Uh, it's supposed to be at the same time from uh, 4 p.m. Sorry, not, not Tuesday. We have lectures on Wednesday. Sorry. Um, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, we won't have a lecture during our um, usual lecture time. Uh, we have a guest speaker from City Council. Um, he will talk to you about um, like his experience and uh, how he uses the knowledge from so mechanics uh, applies it into practice so this is part of the what we called um what do we call it uh, week seven uh, uh, employability week and work experience so uh, um, after uh, attending and listening to that lecture uh, you will have to also complete an assessment task so that assessment task will be um, handled by um, Simon Howell. You probably know him from first year. So he's doing all this um, uh, professional practice um, experience. So he will handle that um, task for you, that assessment task for you. Um, so that uh, you, uh, I think there are three parts as far as I remember from last year. One is a LinkedIn uh, uh, profile. Make sure that you have profile and it's uh, up to date. 
um, just uh, look at some examples. I I'm sure Simon provided some examples. It's not the difficult, but make sure um, that it's, uh, it's all good. And then you'll have to uh, write some uh, reflection on the interview and on the engineers of, of Australia um uh, also requirements but uh, everything should be given um to you uh, provided to you online if you have any questions about that one you can just uh, email me and then i'll probably talk to simon and then we'll help you if you have any uh, problems with that assessment task just like to let you know um but that one i think it's not until week nine so um uh, also, have you guys look at the uh, project one description that I um, uploaded uh, this week? I think maybe or, or last week. So, if you have time, please look at it uh, before the lecture. Um, I will probably go through the uh, through this project. Yeah. So um, I will go through it um, on lecture uh, during lecture again. Explain kind of major things. I also uh, recorded the video. I tried to make it short, but then when I like uh, like made the video, it was like almost uh, 15 minutes. I was like, no way, <laughs> students are gonna watch it. So I kind of tried to explain um, like the uh, overall structure of the project and what you're expected to do. So that one is uh, due uh, week eight, uh, Friday. I think it's uh, September 11th. So, um, well, maybe after the quiz, after you do this quiz on Friday, um, maybe you should already start working on that project. Um, this is something that we have, uh, you have studied so far. You should be able to do uh, all tasks uh, in the project. So uh, there is like nothing new or like something that you don't know. So uh, hopefully everybody will do well. Um, and then again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I think this is going to be the last week I'm teaching you guys uh, because um, uh, next week we have a guest lecture um, and from week uh, eight that will be Dominic Ong, uh, he's um, the one from uh, Nathan, so he will take over. Uh, the arrangement we have uh, this trimester. Um, yeah, I know it was like, uh, it, it just went like so fast. <laughs> but. Um, um, Dominic is a really great um, teacher. You're going to enjoy uh, so many. Well, I think Dominic also probably makes some jokes. <laughs> um, anyway, I will, uh, I'm still your primary convener, guys, so I'm in charge of uh, all you. Um, and uh, I will probably still uh, supervise the quizzes and arrange the quizzes and um, uh, assessment items, all assessment items. And I will still record some uh, videos and upload them on YouTube, so um, you can just always um, watch them. I'm not sure like if uh, all of you watch them, but I do like check sometimes like uh, YouTube and see like that people actually like do watch, and I'm really happy about it because it's kind of really like try to help you during this uh, difficult, challenging time. Um, and um, maybe like with all those like extra like resources that we provide. Okay, so that was a little bit of um, uh, too long for my introduction for today's laboratory. For the what is the margin for the miracle response? Um, the uh, the margin it's reasonable. I put you know in the quiz yes. Uh, yeah, I see question. Um, the margin is um, usually um, when when I calculate the like um, uh, like answer like when I look at the answer I see like what kind of range can be and just provide like like to me it's like reasonable I cannot read really, because um, there are different uh, values different numbers um, then I think that they they kind of like make sense. I cannot really like speak for each question, but um, there is always like a like range. I put range for all the, uh, unless uh, there will be questions for classification. Um, then in this case, uh, there is no range. You just need to provide the correct answer. Like when you classify the soil, remember like what we did uh, a few weeks ago during the laboratory. Um, so and also tutorial. Yeah. So. Um, that's that's the one that um, you need to uh, do. Um, also, what I do, um, I'm, like the quiz on, on Friday, and I'm gonna upload 
your results probably uh, on Tuesday afternoon because I need to still go through um, your answers and just check uh, like also like range and like range of your answers and just uh, like make sure everything works. So I'll just probably use Monday for that. Um, well, again, if you guys um, think that um, the, um, the, you're like kind of like close to the range or like which is not fair, uh, just uh, send me email and I will look at your uh, problem again and see if it's fair or not. I can do that one. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to go to uh, next slides and we'll do we'll do compaction. So there will be questions on Friday about compaction and um, um, well, looks like not all of you look at the project yet. And there will be a question in the project when they actually did some uh, compaction test and you need to analyze the results on compaction test. So what we're going to do today, it's, it's going to be very useful for you um, when you work on your um, assignments. Uh, so we'll start with the compaction and um, you, you probably already uh, like remember. Well, I, I hope you remember that uh, compaction is the process that will make soil denser. So uh, basically, we'll just get rid of the air. So if this is one uh, before and this one is after, so you will see that um, there is no change in the solids. It's still same volume of solids. Uh, there may be some change in the water content, yes, maybe increase or slightly decrease, but the major difference is air. So we just, because we make it denser, we decrease the pore space, and when we decrease pore space, we just get rid of like some air there. And, um, um, well, I hope you watched the videos. If you didn't, you, if you haven't done it yet, well, you probably still have some time because um, I'm going to put some questions uh, in the laboratory uh, lab three quiz, which is going to be next Friday, uh, week seven. I'm going to put some questions about um, um, uh, not only about theory, but also about test procedures. So you can watch it. Um, I think I try to like um, like uh, sp speed up some like parts of the test because the test is actually pretty long. So I try to edit it and uh, like uh, like sort of uh, fast forward some part of the <laughs> test. You'll see this one. Um, so this is really important to know like the way it works. So if you don't even remember after you graduate from this course and like after you graduate uh, from Griffith, you may not remember how to do that. Well, that's okay um, because you probably have other things that you remember that may be like more important. But you can always look either at uh, these YouTube videos because these videos will give you like step by step procedure, or you can also look at the notes. Um, when you do the test. So um, basically what we always do, we follow the standard for each test. Each test has Australian standard and we just follow it like step by step. So what we need to do, we need to prepare soil and soil preparation, we need to uh, make it moist and we need to uh, let it um, what we call rest like uh, for, uh, for some time before we do the test. And then, like the way that we do the test can be uh, seen in this video, which is compaction test. I think in this uh, video I talked about um, just the theory um, and show you a few examples when we have uh, compacted soil and not compacted soil, and like why we need to do that. So this is one of our students who uh, volunteered to help us um, to make this test. Um, so we use him. Um, as well. So this is for the test. Again, it, it's very difficult for me just to talk about the procedure because this is something that you need to either do by yourself or at least like watch your videos. And I think this is what you probably that's going to uh, do uh, before you quiz. So what I will just talk about is what kind of data we get from the test and how we analyze uh, the, the data. Um, this is just a picture to show you um, test in press uh, when we have a hammer 
that's very good uh, uh, heavy hammer. When we did it face to face, um, so I think the students really like it because they thought it was a good um, uh, physical activity. And they even said that they wouldn't go to the gym uh, like the same day because they already like work, uh, work out their shoulders very well. So indeed, it's kind of um, uh, this test uh, involves lots of like labor. It's not something uh, complicated and something really like I would say it's like smart test, but it just uh, involves like a lot of physical activities because uh, we have a mold here. Uh, maybe I'll change to red color. So this is the mold, and we need to um, uh, we need to compact soil in three layers. So for one layer, we will compact it, and we use uh, 25 uh, blows for compaction. Then we'll um, pour like more sand or like soil, and then compact the second layer, and then third layer. So in the end, everybody was tired tight and happy because we ran this test um, four or five times. So like one uh, test will, uh, in, in one test, you uh, compact the soil in three layers and imagine you do this test like four times, four or five times. So um, the reason why we need to do four or five times so that we can get a nice um, a compaction curve like this. So uh, this is again a little bit of theory. So typically we get points like this. So what I'm drawing now, it's points from the test. Um, we need to get the top, what we call the peak. And then we also need to get one or two values uh, after the peak to make sure that this point is the peak. So we look for the maximum dry density and this is what we can find doing this test. So this is uh, maximum dry density. Uh, we don't use density, we use dry density because density also uh, includes uh, water. And we would like to have two independent um, parameters when we analyze the data. So here we already have water content. So that's why here we have dry density. We just uh, we're trying to exclude uh, water from uh, density here. That's why we use dry density. So uh, you may remember from our previous sessions that this is called uh, maximum dry density, and we get it from the peak. And the water content that correlates to the maximum dry density, we call it optimum water content. So these are two. Um, values that we need to get from the test. Um, again, when we look at the uh, maximum dry density, and we'll be very happy as uh, engineers because this soil will give us um, higher strength and stiffness, and it will also have lower permeability. And this is what we need uh, for construction purposes. Of course, we would like to um, compact our soil to its maximum strength, if possible and uh, decrease its uh, coefficient of permeability so that water cannot flow easily through the soil. So this is what we get uh, from the test. And uh, this is um, some laboratory data from one of the tests uh, that we did uh, previously. So I will go through each of the table. And then we will do a little bit of exercise. So we'll look at the results uh, and then we'll just do like analysis by ourselves. Um, so for the test, uh, before we start, um, we will need to measure um, the mass of uh, mold. Um, mold, uh, yeah, I think it's American spelling, mold. No, British, right? American without you. And uh, also, uh, we need to measure the volume. So we measure a diameter, and we measure the height of the mold. Then we measure its mass. Uh, mold is that uh, container, uh, that rigid container uh, in which we compact soil. And we need to know the volume of that container because of the mold, because that will give us uh, the volume of the soil, like soil sample. 
and that's what we need to know because in the end uh, we will need to know the density of that compacted soil so um then um when we this is the mold and then we put uh, compact soil we put the first layer and compact it then second layer compacted and then third layer compacted so if this is the height of the mold uh, we can calculate the volume of the mold right I, in this case I think we use uh, cubic centimeters um, after we compact uh, the soil we need to measure the water content so for this test um, we uh, typically do four or five experiments so you see in this case we did five tests and we typically start with a low uh, range of water content that we would expect from the soil when we start when we deal with soil we don't know its um, uh, maximum dry density and optimum water content we have no idea so that's why we kind of try to like find it and then we start with a low range of water content we'll do one test and then we would increase uh, the water content and do the second test then we'll increase more more and more until we will notice that uh, even though we increase uh, the amount of water in soil uh, the density of the soil will start going down so after that uh, we'll probably stop and uh, uh, for the water content test we're gonna take sample from the top we'll to take one sample from here uh, top and then we can take one sample here from the bottom the reason why we take two samples is uh, we can get uh, the average uh, sometimes you will see that uh, the water content at the bottom is a little bit um, greater than the water content on the top so we just need to uh, approximate the water content and we'll um, get the average between these two values so uh, for test one you see we use uh, top and bottom uh, well this is a typical uh, procedure for water content we first measure the mass of a uh, container then we put uh, uh, wet soil in the container and measure its mass then we put it in the oven for 24 hours and then we dry it and then this is mass of a uh, container with the dry soil and then we'll start doing calculations to get water content uh, remember that water content is mass of uh, uh, water to mass of uh, uh, solids or dry soil so we do calculations we find mass of uh, solids then mass of water and then we get water content 681 and between uh, top and bottom we use these two values to get the average value of 6.9 so that's for one test then we will uh, remove the uh, soil we just add more water and uh, perform second test and do the same procedure and for the second test you see we uh, increase water content to 11.6 uh, sometimes we don't know how much to increase so we just try to like we see how it goes uh, with the first test and then we would just uh, well say maybe we just increase uh, add like maybe more water typically for this test we'll start we'll just add like 100 grams of water and then maybe we'll add another 100 or 150 grams of water and then for another test um, like another 150 grams of water but then like once we know like uh, approximately the water content for like next experiment for next uh, uh, class we already know like water to add so it is much easier but for the first time uh, you kind of um, like try and, and miss and uh, hit and miss you know like the kind of procedure that you have okay so uh, this is for the water content uh, test that we need to know water content to uh, draw the curve and this is uh, uh, data from the um, measurements of the soil mass so you will see that mass of compacted soil and plus mold so after we compact so everything that we have in this mold together with the soil we're going to measure it and this is going to be the mass of the soil plus the mold and then 
once we know the mass of the mold because we are uh, it's here because we measured before we started the test we can just calculate the mass of the soil just this is only mass of the soil and then we can calculate the density so uh, density it's mass of the soil divided by the volume and this volume come comes from the volume of uh, mold so this is the volume it comes here and this is wet density um, and then we already know water content well it took like one day for us to measure it but we have the value 6.9 comes from here and then we need to get the dry density anybody remembers how to get dry density once we know the density and water content uh, yeah yeah that's correct so uh, what we need to do is uh, dry density it's um, just density divided by one plus water content so this is what we get and this is how uh, it works and we do the same procedure for all uh, five tests so you see that um, I'll just erase this um, you see that for the first test when we added some water we got uh, this mass of uh, the soil plus mold then we added more water and you will see the mass increase which tell us that uh, there was increase in the density right um, we still don't know if there was increase in the dry density probably it was uh, but then we're gonna we're gonna add more water and then we'll see that it goes up again so as it uh, goes up we continue our test so we're gonna add more water uh, and you will see that it again goes a little bit uh, higher but maybe not by much and then just we kind of really think that like somewhere around here there will be the peak we still don't know we need to confirm it so we increase more water and then we'll see that even though we increase more water look water content became 23 but uh, the mass of compacted soil actually decreased to um, 6460 so we already have this idea that the peak is going to be somewhere in this area so in this case uh, we can do another test if we want uh, maybe go to water content maybe 25 or 26 um, but we already kind of uh, know that we already like over the peak so uh, maybe not necessary um, five tests should be enough if you do like more tests six or seven that's okay it's just more physical exercise for you uh, more tests is better than uh, less tests because for geotechnical like some mechanics uh, it's all about um, uh, how uh, reliable your data is and uh, to make it uh, reliable you need to actually test soil like more often so not just like one or two tests uh, you need to um, have um, like like for this test maybe like around four or five or four from four to six um, yeah and I think that should be like a good number if you have any questions about the procedure uh, in that video that we created for you guys uh, we only show results from like first test we didn't do uh, like another four experiments because it's like same um, same procedures so, like what we do in the first test we just repeat it uh, for the second test we just add a little bit of more water that's it but then we just do what you add each time yeah so well how do we decide is um we kind of have some idea like we will start it's like we don't know how much uh like nobody knows right so and but we know that we're gonna have about four or five attempts sort of like we will do like four or five tests and then we will try to use the water content for these four or five tests so that we can try to get like a good range and for that range uh, we will just find uh, um, uh, the optimum water content uh, for for most of the tests 
from our experience and I think from like geotechnical experience for uh, uh, sandy material for sand or gravel uh, your um, uh, optimum water content will be sort of in the range from 10 to 15 percent like this is this will be like a common range of course it's not like each soil will be in that range but 10 15 percent uh, water content so what we can do we can probably start with uh, let's say like five percent of water content right so and then maybe next test will be ten percent another one next one fifteen percent maybe twenty percent and twenty five percent something like that so then if we know that we have let's say one thousand uh, grams of soil for this test uh, and we need five percent we can calculate how much water we need like in grams and then we're going to add uh, water here plus uh, five percent water content water and uh, we're just going to mix it and then we're going to uh, do the test and then we will see the results and then we'll go to 10 percent 15 percent 20 percent 25 percent um if we work with like really like sandy material we can do maybe like narrow the range and maybe go with five percent 8%, 11, like 15 or 18, something like that. So that's for like um, coarse grain material. That's very common. And that's what we uh, do. Uh, for clay, for silty, for silt and clay, um, the water content, uh, the optimum water content uh, should be uh, greater, higher than for um, sand. So it may be in the range of like 20, 25 percent will be um, optimum water content so in this case maybe for clay you could start with 10 percent right then go 15 percent 20 uh, 25 and 30. well again this is our assumption that uh, like what we would like to do and um, once we get look uh, uh, if you look at the results i'm going to the next slide so uh, when we look at the results, uh, it always uh, like a range, always a range, and that's why we have uh, we need to get more points uh, to get more accurate results. Um, in this case, you will see that um, optimum water content was about 17.4, and I think what we used is one of that uh, low plasticity, uh, low plasticity sealed. So it's not like very like like clay material, but it's kind of um, it has some um, plasticity. So in this case, we got around 17.4, and we started with seven. I think we uh, we wanted to start with five percent, but you know these tests are not perfect. Uh, also, like depends how you mix it with uh, water. Um, that's why. Um, we um, we need to measure the water content after each test that will give us accurate values of water content. So that's that's how we do it. So nobody knows the optimum water content and maximum dry density for uh, each soil. Um, that's why we're going with the range. But we kind of know like the range, so we can just distribute this like four or five, like four to six like points within the range to get the peak. So you will see that from this test, we're going to get the peak, 1.695. Um, usually, I would round to 1.7. Um, uh, in this case, you see it's pretty easy to find the peak. Sometimes uh, uh, you will see the curve when you have points like this. And go like that. So if you connect, it will be something like, like this. So you see, even though you have like two uh, maximum points from the test, I think what you can do, you can allow a little bit, um, give it a little bit room for um, the peak. So if you draw a curve, so it will be somewhere here. So this is optimum water content, and this is maximum dry density. Could I go back one slide? Okay, I can go back to one slide. Um, yes, but everything is gone. If you have any questions, guys, about this slide?
<laughs> okay. Um, yeah, well, I'm not sure if you uh, get hold of uh, that uh, book of uh, mine, like uh, some mechanics for project-based learning. I took this example from the book. And this example is actually from like real tests that we have done because we do it every year and for the past 10 years we continue like doing the same test and um, this is what we get. Um, and this is the results. Um, okay, so um, just to want, I want to make sure that um, you are with me and um, not a note like maybe outside drinking coffee. Eh? Uh, which is also a good idea. Um, when we um, look at the um, uh, control test, because I'm not sure if you, well, you probably like not all of you like read the uh, project one description, you are given some uh, results from the control test on compaction. So how are you going to use uh, those uh, control uh, tests uh, to decide if the compaction was well done or not? So let's say uh, you went to the field where, where the soil was compacted and you took some soil samples and uh, you measured uh, the water content before you put it in the oven and after. So, and also you, um, uh, you need to decide uh, if it's actually that compaction was uh, good or not good. So what shall you do, guys? The field value should be 90 percent. Okay, that's correct. So um, what you need to do is uh, you're going to get um, results from the laboratory test that you'll analyze and uh, draw as uh, drawn here, water content versus dry density. Then you're going to go get the peak, uh, 1.7 grams per cubic centimeters. And then um, for uh, field compaction, we allow 95% of maximum dry density. So to find 95%, uh, you're going to have 1.7 times 0 0.95, right? And you're going to get some value. I'm not sure exactly what the value, but probably maybe 1.6 or something, or 1.5. Let's say it's like 1.6, but I'm, I may be not a mirror. So then you, you will look at 1.6 here. And this is going to be the uh, values of uh, uh, dry density that are allowed. So uh, if you do this control test and then you get the uh, dry density from the control test, it's 1.65 uh, grams per cubic centimeters. So this is good because it's within this range, 1.65, it's above here, right? Um, that's good. And uh, another one, uh, you need to check the water content. So let's say your water content is, um, um, let's say, 16, 16%, right? 16%, uh, sorry, not density water content. So um, the requirement uh, for um, uh, compaction for the control test, it's um, you have water content, which is optimum water content plus minus 1.5%. So your optimum water content, it's 17.4. Uh, so plus minus 1%, well, if we just kind of round 17.5, plus minus it would be 16, right? to uh, 19 and you have 16%. Uh, so it's still in the range, right? So if it's uh, in the range, this in the range and this in the range, in this case, the compaction is well done. If let's say you have uh, here, for example, you have only 13% water content. That's from your uh, control test, like the one that you um, obtained from control test. But this one is still 1.65. So in this case, you see that this one is well done. Um, it's in the range, but this is not in the range. So in this case, um, the compaction is not well done and it needs to be redone. So because uh, if the 10% it's uh, too low, it should be from um, like this plus minus 1.5%. 
So this is what you're going to do for your project. Uh, for your project one, uh, you will draw this curve. Um, you will get um, maximum dry density optimum water content. Uh, you need to know that so that you can check if the uh, field compaction was done to the um, to the requirement or not. And then you will just tell us yes, I mean, tell me yes or no. You have any questions about this? Okay. I'll take it to no questions. Good. So I just want to emphasize this one. First of all, um, it's very practical um, because this is what you will uh, you'll be required to do uh, if you work um, for let's say like in this area, like geotechnical, um, and uh, also it will be good for your assessment item for your project, so you, you can get a, a better mark. Okay, so I'm going to next slide. This is just an example, and maybe what I will just do, just um, go through this example uh, with you guys uh, together, just show how it works, because um, this is the kind of data that you'll be given in your project one. I mean, you were given project one. So you are given a mass of uh, compacted soil, and you're given water content. I think for your project, you are given mass of compacted soil together with the mold. What I don't remember, or maybe like without mold, just like uh, read it carefully and see what you are given. And uh, you are given the volume of the mold. This is the volume. It's a standard, usually, um, uh, volume in cubic meters. And um, what you need to do, uh, you need to uh, plot the curve. Uh, uh, another thing that um, I want to mention, when you work on your project, uh, you must draw everything. So uh, even though you may like, kind of guess the maximum uh, maximum dry density and optimum water content, you can get it from the just table or from the data. You still need to draw everything. Uh, you need to draw grain size distribution curves. Uh, you need to draw compaction curves. Uh, you need to draw cross section, so you just need to draw everything. Uh, if you don't draw, um, if you, well, if you don't draw, like for example, this compaction curve, but still give me your answer, you're going to lose lots of points because uh, your answer without uh, correct drawings uh, is not enough. So I would like to see you drawing because this is what you uh, expect to do in the industry. Uh, you need to draw uh, like grain size distribution curves, and you also need to draw these compaction curves. Uh, with the compaction curve, uh, it's up to you how you draw it. Uh, if you want to draw by hand, that's fine. Just make sure that you have um, proper scale, and it's all up to scale. Uh, if you want to draw by Excel or any other software, uh, maybe it's uh, even better. Well, uh, it's up to you. So like in my case, uh, look uh, here, I use Excel to draw this uh, graph. Um, make sure that you also uh, provide uh, units and the label uh, exits. So um, needs to uh, be set its water end and dry density. So if you don't label uh, exits and if you don't provide correct units, you're going to lose points. Because you need to do it up to the standard. And whatever you like, you miss or like you forget to do that, uh, you, uh, you'll be penalized. I mean, the penalty, uh, let's say, if you like forget units, it's not as severe as you don't draw like the whole thing, uh, but still uh, you're gonna lose a few points because it's not complete uh, without units, right? So um, yeah, well, try to do it uh, as uh, much and as nice as you can. Um, if you draw by hand, uh, it's still fine. Um, there is no like any preference uh, for me. If you like feel like drawing by hand, that's like uh, it's up to you. But just make sure that all the lines are clear, and um, there is like not like uh, like sometimes students will draw kind of like fix like like lines like like this. Um, I don't know why, maybe they draw it in the last minute, 
or maybe they just like don't care much they just want to pass uh, well you can still do that but you're gonna lose points as well so um, try to do it uh, professionally I think it's uh, like what we teach you here at Griffith it's like not only knowledge but we just would like you to like develop good uh, habits you know like so that like after you graduate you already know like uh, how to do it like uh, in the right professional way so um, I think it will be a good example like good practice for you in this course okay so um, let's look at what we have here uh, we have data from um, one two three four Five tests when we have the content. Uh, we did something, uh, I think, during lecture. So I'll just go through it again. Um, I don't think it's very difficult. Um, from my experience, many students do well in the project part uh, when they deal with compaction. I'll just talk about like major uh, mistakes so that you avoid doing them, and that should be fine. Um, well, you probably already know and already mentioned this one that there are two steps to analyze the data. Uh, the first step, we need to get just density. We call it uh, bulk density or wet density. And after that, we need to get dry density. And uh, you guys already know that dry density is uh, density, which comes from here is divided by one plus water content. Um, it's not very common, but sometimes sometimes I see students, they use percentage. So there is no percentage here, just ratio. So if, for example, for the first test, you have 12.8%, here you're going to write 0 0.1 to 8. That's how it works. And you do it for each test, test one, two, three, four, five. And this is what you need to get. You don't need density. It's not useful for this test. Uh, OK, yeah. another common mistake is um, some students, they don't realize that uh, density and dry density are two different things. So they use density to draw a curve. And in this case, you're going to get uh, wrong results. So um, your density is usually in the range of here, like it will be like about two uh, megagrams per cubic meters. This one is 1 1.7. Um, then we can, uh, like, uh, when we assess, when we check, we can easily, uh, like, see this mistake because your density, uh, you, you use density to draw it, not dry density. Uh, and your values are usually like pretty high. Okay, so just remember uh, water content versus uh, dry density. Um, and then uh, and this is just another thing. I don't think you are required to do that uh, for the um, uh, project, but you may be asked to, um, uh, in your online quiz on Friday, you may be asked to uh, use the data from a compaction test uh, to find probably the uh, air content or um, things like that. So um, it's it's not very practical. Typically, we we don't do it like a lot in the in the industry uh, with uh, air content, but um, I do put some questions from time to time in the quizzes just to test your knowledge and understanding. So this is where students can make uh, mistakes because they don't really understand like the like water uh, versus a content thing. Um, so uh, just make sure that uh, you guys understand. Uh, whatever questions uh, about a content, um, especially for compacted soil, we usually use this formula. I'm not sure if there's any other formulas, but this is probably like the one that uh, we would use. Um, what we can do is uh, sometimes, not very often, but sometimes we're asked to draw uh, what we call the exper uh, theoretical curve when we have a uh, dry density of that soil with zero A content. So we just Im uh, imagine that we make it so dense there is no any pore space. Or uh, if, if there is pore space, a little bit of pore space, it's all filled with water. So it's uh, uh, like more like theoretical 
uh, line. Uh, it never uh, happens in in real life. So we just uh, need to draw that curve to make sure that our results are correct. And I will show you later like how we use this curve to uh, confirm our results. So uh, in this case, what we're going to draw is uh, data from these two columns. And um, uh, we'll also draw this uh, theoretical curve. Theoretical theory, our theory. Um, well, um, if you ask to draw like curves with 5% of A content or A content AV, or maybe 10%, or 15%, you can easily do that. You're just going to use uh, this formula and you just change this AV to, let's say, if you have 5%, you change to 0 0.05 and calculate. Well, let's, let's do 10%. Let's do 10%. So you change to 0 0.1. We don't use uh, percentage, we use ratio. So this one will be 0 0.1. And then for each test, uh, we're going to use uh, water content goes here. Uh, dry density goes here. Specific gravity, it's usually given. I think it was 2.7 uh, and 2.7. And then we just calculate. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, my, my mistake. Um, I just uh, gave wrong information. I'll erase this one. So for 10%, for 10%, so when we have a 10% here, uh, we put here 0 0.1, and we just use water content, put it here, and uh, specific gravity 2.7. And then we're gonna find, uh, we're gonna find this one. We're gonna find this red density, and we're gonna put it here. Uh, sorry, not here here and then we uh, take a second test uh, this water content uh, we put it here again to the formula and then we're going to find another dry density and that will be here so that's how we do it and uh, afterwards i'll just go to the results um, this is what we draw. Uh, again, this is probably drawn by Excel. Uh, water content, percentage versus dry density, uh, micrograms per cubic uh, meters. It's okay. So this is the curve from the with the test results. This is what we need. Um, this will give us optimum water content. Optimum water content. I think it's uh, 15.2. Percent. Um, this one, it's um, I don't remember, probably 1.83 here, maximum density. And uh, these are two lines one is with uh, zero air. So remember, I call it the theoretical line theory. And um, the way we uh, confirm that our results are correct is. Uh, our test results will never cross this um, line with 0% uh, of air. So you see like they never touch. So um, that's how we know that results are correct. 10% or maybe another one goes here like 5%. They can cross, um, they can cross uh, our experimental curve the one is uh, standard uh, compression curve that's fine um, uh, sometimes engineers use it to get some idea about how much air will be for the soil that we compact to um, different uh, dry density for example they will know that for this uh, soil if we compact it to uh, like this value maybe 1.81 grams per cubic city. We're going to have about 5% of uh, air for this soil uh, compacted to 1.79. We're going to have about 10% of air. So that's it. That's how it works. Um, this uh, theoretical curve is just to make sure that um, the curve is correct. 
they know uh, they they never cross never if they cross it means that you did something wrong uh, I've seen a few reports a um, few ass assignments when um, this um, curve crossed um, the experimental curve so I already knew that the students made a mistake so this is uh, this is will never happen um, okay and um, let me just see um, well another common question that can be in one of the quizzes um, then uh, find the, uh, what what will be the a content at the uh, in the soil which is compacted to the maximum density and just well think about it um, there may be something on Friday like not the same thing but uh, with a similar kind of um, ideas um, so how do we find either uh, air content or like something else for the soil that is compacted uh, to its maximum density so what we um, need to do is we need to just find that maximum density and this is something that you can get from the curve and from the curve we get it's 1.83 and uh, water content it's 15.2 uh, so you see like you're not given uh, numbers but you are given maximum uh, compacted to its maximum density or for example you can say when it's compacted uh, to the water content of 17 uh, percent so you know water content and also you can also get uh, dry density which correlates to 17 percent so um, you may not give in all the data specifically, but you get it from your uh, like graphs. That's how you do. So let's do uh, a content for the maximum dry density. So it's uh, maximum dry density here was um, one eight to nine. Well, maybe we'll say like one point three. And water content was uh, here 15.2 percent. Well, we were correct. So, and specific gravity it was given to us already. So we just uh, put the numbers: uh, dry density, water content, specific gravity, and then we're gonna find the uh, AV. Uh, we we'll find it as ratio. If we're asked to present it as percentage, we just multiply by 100 percent and get 3.6 percent. So for the soil. That is compacted to its maximum dry density the amount of air will be 3.6 percent to the total volume of the sample uh, you have any questions i think this is how much i want you to talk about uh, compaction so i think it's good we reviewed some like basic concept of compaction um hopefully you'll do well uh, in your project and um give it a good go for your <laughs> quiz on friday <laughs> uh, okay so um, oh look there was like another slide uh well we did talk about it right so uh, already explained it's 95 maximum dry, dry density and usually you are specifically given the range for optimum water content and in the project it will be optimum water content plus minus 1.5 percent so maybe it will narrow the range maybe till here so this is the range so just like um, read it carefully i do remember writing this one optimum water content plus minus 1.5 percent because that's commonly used in the practice like in the industry so we already teach you like what you need to know for the industry in this course okay and i'll take it as um all good um okay so now what i want to talk about is um the um, uh, second test um, and uh, also will be good review uh, for um, uh, your um, uh, project and also for a quiz on friday look uh, today's like a good like reviewing session as well um well again there was a video that we recorded some time ago way in which i explained this uh, consistency of soil consistency and um, how uh, water will change it right so um this only works for plastic soil 
and plastic soil uh, as you know it can be sealed or clay right so um, they have lots of fines and those fines particles they will um, make soil plastic right so uh, major things that we need to know uh, it's water content at which uh, soil uh, becomes uh, plastic and this is what we call plastic limit and uh, water content at which water becomes um, uh, like a liquid liquid limit um, what um, uh, index do we use to uh, describe the range between a plastic uh, limit and liquid limit do you guys remember plasticity index yes so we use plasticity index which is liquid limit minus uh, plastic limit okay so um for kind of like normal like normally occurring uh, soils on gold coast what do you think will be plasticity index or like maybe like liquid limit what will be liquid limit what do you think less than 50 <laughs> that's a good answer <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, that, uh, that's correct. Yeah, that's a fifty. Um, uh, typically, uh, well, like the soils that we tested, um, because um, also we do some research, right? It's not only teaching uh, at Griffith. We also require to do research, and um, I'm interested in research on these plastic soils, like how they swell. Uh, and uh, we tested uh, different soils from parkwood. Helen's well, Southport. So most of the soils uh, will have liquid limit less than uh, 50%, so which are not very plastic. Uh, so those the soils. Um, there are a few soils that we also tested. We we work with uh, Queensland Trail, so they had some issue with um, like some parts. Um, I don't. It's like closer to Toowoomba. Uh, they have problem. Uh, they have railroad, which was uh, built on uh, very plastic soil, and when we tested, the liquid limit was about 70. So the problem with that soil is that when uh, there is kind of like wet season, like rain falls for some time, uh, soil will absorb that water and it will swell, and it will uh, deform the rail track. So they had to close that uh, rail track. So they came to us and we did some investigation. We look at CBR, so um, the um, uh, bearing capacity of that soil. We did some testing here at Griffith and so that uh, they can uh, design uh, better like measures to um, uh, fix that issue with the very um, plastic soil. So this is like just like show like uh, another practical application of soil mechanics. Uh, so like well, most of like what we do, it's kind of more like practical. There is not much. Well, there is some theory, and like lots of theory, you will uh, learn in geotechnical engineering course next uh, trimester. But soil mechanics is kind of more like um, dealing with soil, uh, like doing like hands-on. Well, you cannot really do hands-on, sorry, but doing kind of practical things. So um, liquid limit, once we know like liquid limit, we can already uh, have a good idea about the soil. And just I give you some example with um, that uh, railroad. Uh, we do have lots of soil from Toowoomba. We still continue our experiments where we um, create uh, environment uh, like uh, we uh, simulate rainfall and just want to measure how much uh, soil is going to swell over time so we'll run our test for like one or two months just like to see and like measure that swell potential of the soil so that later on we can think about uh, better uh, design solutions so um, yeah well just talk a little bit about <laughs> um, my research uh, I thought you know because it's kind of like last week I talk to you guys um, to give you some ideas of what uh, we're doing here also, uh, like other than teaching. Okay, so this is liquid limit, um, and it's going to be less than 50, but, well, uh, it doesn't mean that all soils on Gold Coast are going to be like less than 50. I think maybe, like in some places, maybe due to some origin, like uh, geological conditions, maybe uh, it can be even like greater than 50. 
but usually it should be like less than 50 uh, and uh, uh, plastic limit what would be like a good range for plastic limit guys for most of the soils um, okay I'll tell you it's, it's about 20 30 percent less than 50 <laughs> I could answer less than 50 um, okay okay then I'm gonna ask you like a difficult question right so like you see how I always say is like like um, plastic soil uh, clay and sealed um, how come we cannot get this like various liquid limit and plastic limit for uh, sand what do you think why why do I never use this um, um, this um, like liquid limit and plastic limit yes of course grain but we can probably still do this like plastic limit or liquid limit test and maybe uh, the plastic index will be like very very low so um, um, it doesn't shrink or expand yeah it doesn't shrink and expand but shrink shrink and expand it's like more for this like shrinkage limits they don't liquefy no so kind of so ascent liquefies not affect the volume um okay so well i thought that's a bit difficult question um for this test uh for plastic limit and liquid limit test if you watch the video i explain how to do that and there are things that we can do for clay but unfortunately well not fortunate unfortunately just it's, it's not possible to do for um uh for sand so uh we can still do liquid limit for um, this liquid limit test for uh, sand because like the way we do it but we cannot do plastic limits we cannot do plastic limit tests uh, because um, we need to uh, roll uh, soil into threads and those threads should be a uh, diameter of about three millimeters that's not possible <coughs> uh, to do for sand because sand you cannot roll uh, sand into uh, like any plastic like material like those uh, thin uh, threads and I'll show you later you can make it like be kind of like sausages yes but um, those uh, sausages like too big so it should be a um, uh, size like a certain size for those like little what we call snakes but um, um, the term is like threads uh, like I'll show you later like and just like also watch the video for plastic limit test okay so uh, uh, I'll go to next slides uh, for the test uh, well another practical I think um, liquid limit in practice uh, reactive expensive soils um, we identify them as liquid limit uh, more than 50 as I mentioned already gold cost not really we don't have this issue unless maybe them, some like certain areas um, I know that in uh, Oxenford uh, there are um, some um, uh, issues with the soil has like a higher liquid limit than 50 but in uh, uh, Victoria I think uh, Victoria and New South Wales um, they have um, like bigger issue with um, uh, expensive reactive soils uh, there is like lots of like very soft material which are very plastic and they can't really build anything so they need to do some consolidation and things like that so um, if you build you know like your like a house on uh, soil uh, that can um, swell lots, uh, sort of absorb lots of water and swell and it can also shrink so we need to look at the linear shrinkage it should be more than eight uh, percent shrinkage so in this case we define soil as uh, reactive or expensive soil and then we need to deal uh, with them differently so we have uh, different ways to um, like when we uh, build structures uh, design structures uh, we uh, need to consider that uh, soil is really reactive and we would just use like different uh, design options for uh, those buildings so this is something that I would like you to know and remember uh, even if you don't work as a judicial engineer at least like you have some understanding what can happen if you build on reactive soil uh, let's go to next slides um I already showed it during lecture but I think I kind of like zip through that um just want to show it again 
Um, this uh, the picture of uh, clay particles. And you know that clay particles, uh, when, when we classify the soil, we define clay particles as less than uh, this size, 0 0.002 millimeters, all right? Um, so if we have particles like that, um, they they be actually like really, really small particles. And they usually have a uh, um, shape like this. And uh, all these clay particles, because of this uh, chemical and mineral composition, they will develop some uh, charge like negative charge on the side of um, clay particle. And then what is going to happen is uh, this charge is going to attract water, which is H2O. H2O is going to attract water. And water will be absorbed by these particles. So let's say we have uh, minerals like uh, smectite and montmorillonite. Remember, I told you, like I said, like kind of like really bad minerals um, that will uh, create lots of uh, problems. So they have really uh, strong charge here. So if uh, this looks like a normal clay uh, for uh, those minerals like smectite, montmorillonite, they're gonna attract even more water to uh, compensate the charge. So they're gonna I am, uh, uh, draw uh, molecules of water here. So uh, you see, like this is the size of the particle, which is really really small, and see how much water it absorbs. Uh, it's because of this negative charge on the side. So you will see, uh, like why uh, some clay can have very high water content because this is going to be a mass of water. And there is lots of water around this uh, like small clay particle. And this is going to be just mass of uh, solids. So um, for this uh, smectite, montmorillonite uh, mineral clays, you will see that it's going to be like four or five times uh, the amount of water will be greater than just, uh, sorry, uh, the mass of water will be greater than the mass of uh, clay particle. And uh, imagine I'm talking about just like one particle and we have another particle here and it also has all this water here. So you see that when we talk about what's, um, um, void space, you see all this void space, how much, how much void is here between these two particles. This is like enormous compared again uh, to the size of the particle. That's why this um, reactive clays and like like clays and also reactive clays, they have very high void ratio because of this, right? Even though it looks like a very uh, compact, you know, like dense material like clay, but if we kind of uh, like zoom in and look at what is going on with those little clay particles, we're gonna see a picture like that. So um, with, the, uh, with the clay, what is happening when it's dry, so particles are like more or less, uh, uh, there together. There's also um, uh, Van der Waals force that keep particles together, just um, uh, attract them together. So imagine if this one is when well, it's kind of like more or less dry soil, right? And then we're going to add some water. So what is going to happen? Water will go and in between and absorb will be absorbed by the clay particles to compensate the charge. And then if there is even more water, the water will squeeze even more uh, between the particles and it will separate the particles. So in the end, we're gonna have a picture like this. And here we have all these um, uh, molecules of water. So you see what is happening. So in terms of the volume, how it uh, is going to change. So that was uh, the volume V1, and now it became like this V2. So this is what happens to uh, very uh, reactive soils, uh, especially clays, the one that have that clay mineral. So uh, what you see here, it's not, it's not actually clay part. It's actually um, um, like several particles uh, glued to, uh, together to each other. So what we call like clusters um, of flocks. So like um, particles that have uh, like clay, clay flocks. 
um, and um, uh, in uh, in real life it may it may change. So if water goes in between those uh, clay plates, it will separate them, and uh, clay will increase its volume. When water, like for some reason, maybe it's like a dry season, uh, what uh, the amount of water decreases, then clay particles will come closer to each other because of that attraction attraction force between them, uh, and that's why like that's what causes all this like uh, shrinkage and swelling. So I just wanted to explain the uh, physics of like or maybe like the um, like mechanism or, like what what is going on here, so that uh, you can better understand like what we're talking about uh, like plasticity and reactive clay. So I also showed you this um, uh, slide where we talk about clay minerals. So these are non-clay minerals which are present uh, both in rocks and also present in soil. So quartz and feldspar will be the major uh, minerals. Uh, and uh, um, for clay soil, like soft material like clay, uh, they typically have like one of uh, these clay minerals. So um, very common it's uh, kaolinite and montmorillonite. And out of all these minerals, Montmorillonite, or uh, another uh, slightly different uh, chemical uh, version of Montmorillonite is smectite. These are uh, minerals that have a stronger charge, like negative charge on like the edges, and these two minerals will attract and hold lots of water. So that's that's what typically create reactive soil. When we uh, investigate reactive soil like the one that we investigated from Toowoomba. Uh, when we did its uh, mineral composition of the soil, we found there was lots of Montmorillonite in the soil. The soil that we have here, like in front of uh, Griffith, like the one that we use uh, to teach students, uh, it has uh, some uh, kaolinite, not much. So that soil that we just let like, use for teaching purposes, it doesn't have very high um, liquid limit. I think it has liquid limit about uh, 30, 35. I think it's actually 30. And the one from Toowoomba liquid limit is 70 to 80 percent. So uh, you see the difference like a lot. Okay, so these are the things. Um, okay, I'm going to go quickly. Um, and the test that we uh, do, like liquid limit, plastic limit, they're also called the uh, Artiberg limits test. It's uh, after the scientist uh, uh, called Tiberg. He developed this um, this uh, testing procedure that we use to uh, determine this liquid limit and plastic limit. Um, oh, this is me. At least it was a good picture of me. Usually I have some, some strange um, liquid limit test. Um, please watch this uh, video. Um, I show how it works, um, and I actually do like four tests. So we do four different tests, uh, and um, just want to see what other slides I have. Uh, sorry, just let me check it first quickly. If I can find it. Ah, okay. So um, these are the tests. Okay, so this is the liquid limit test, um, and then we use this uh, soil, which is here, and this is what we call uh, Casa Grande cup. And for Casa Grande cup, we're going to, um, this is just another piece of Casa Grande cup here. Um, we prepare soil, uh, we start with a certain water content, and then uh, usually we start with kind of uh, high water end. Um, we'll start maybe about, um, I don't know, like soil that is not very wet, but also like moist soil. And then we will just uh, mix the soil um, with water, and then we'll create a sort of a slurry. And then we're going to put it in this cup, like shown here. And then we're going to make a line here with a groove. And then we start, there is a handle here. We will rotate this handle, 
uh, two revolutions per second. And then you will see that uh, this part of soil will slide down and is going to close here, close up. So when it uh, reaches a uh, certain size, it's about uh, uh, like 17 uh, uh, millimeters, uh, then we will stop and then we just count the number of blows. So this will give us number of blows and then we we'll count them. And then we'll take this uh, part of the soil and we do water content test. So we just need to get water content for this soil. Then we finish the test, we clean uh, the cup, and then we again mix the soil with a little bit of more water, make it a little bit wetter. And then we just like repeat the same procedure. We put it in the cup, we make a line here, empty uh, line here with a groove, and then we do the test. So uh, we, will, uh, we will notice that when we increase the water content, uh, we will also need um, uh, less number of uh, blows to um, close this area because it's kind of like wetter the soil is wetter it's like more like a slurry and then you just need like uh, less uh, physical um, like uh, mechanical uh, destruction for the soil so that it will slide down and close that uh, empty uh, empty space and what we need to do for this test again we'll do about four or five tests uh, in the video i did uh, four tests but i think it's supposed to do like uh, like the more the better so five will be even better so maybe i should have done like uh, like one extra one so that again um the uh, the main point of all this test because they are not very like accurate like like in science you know like to like a millimeter or like decimeter so uh, in this case, we just kind of take with like a quantity. So we, we do more tests to make sure that our data is accurate. So five tests will be good. Well, I did four and I think I got good results as well. Um, then um, what we do next is um, we will um, draw the curve. So again, this one I borrowed from my book, this, uh, this uh, graph, sorry, this, this table. Uh, you see that um, we started with um, like like moist soil. Uh, usually we start like the one that will be a little bit higher than plastic limit um, um, plastic limit water content. I will talk about plastic limit a bit later. So uh, in this case we started with uh, soil and it give us uh, 33 blues. So this is like number of cranks or number of blow counts. And then we uh, measured mass of container. Well, this is like standard procedure for water content test. Mass of wet soil, mass of dry container, and then we got this uh, water content. So this is what we need. And then uh, we repeated the soil. Uh, sorry, we, we repeated the test. We added slightly more water. And because it was uh, like more like a slurry, like more like watery, so we only uh, needed 24 uh, blows to close that empty space. And then when we measured water content, it was 47. We just keep repeating the test. We increase water content. And at some point we made it like really, really like wet, moist, so that it, it was like so like a slide. We just needed only like six blows and then it was all done. So in this case, we got 52.8. So usually, like when I would do this test uh, in the laboratory, I recommend that we, we need to get a uh, uh, first value with the number of blows from 30 to 40 in this range. Then we need to get another one, 20 to 30, um, then 10 to 20. And if it's like less than 10, it's OK. So we can, um, it's not perfect, you know, like sometimes you cannot get like one value for like in, in this range from 30 to 40. Well, then you'll just like do more tests if you get like two values in this range. Well, uh, that's okay. So like the more the better. And what we do next is we use this number of blows and we draw it against moisture content. Um, and uh, what you need to do, well, you'll need to do that uh, definitely for your project, but not project one, for project two. Uh, you'll be given this data again. Uh, you should be able to calculate uh, water content. Usually I give data from the test, like this much. 
and you should find water content. And then you find water content, you need to draw this curve, which is number of blows uh, versus uh, water or moisture content. So, well, and again, like this is what you do in the industry, you need to do that. Uh, and then you uh, put your points here, you draw a line of like linear line of best fit. And to find the liquid limit, you need to, liquid limit, uh, it's water content that correlates with uh, 25 blows. So you find 25 here, and then this is going to be water content 47.2. Uh, That's what you know. So what you need to remember, students make mistake, this is log scale. You see this is log scale. This is a regular scale, a moisture content a regular scale. For number of blows, it's log scale. So just remember this one. The rest, you can just plot it in Excel or just plot it by hand. You just need to find a, a paper with a log scale. And this is what you can do. And um, you can draw by hand. Um, any questions on this, What we, how we're doing this? You still there, guys, or get tired a little bit? No questions? OK. OK, no questions. OK, then um, uh, OK. OK, so I'll take it as no questions. Good. Uh, let's go to next um, plastic limit test. Again, please watch this video. Uh, plastic limit test. Um, okay, so this is why we cannot use um, plastic limit test for sand because there is no way you can make these um, uh, threads, like what are called soil threads. Sometimes we call them like little like snakes or sausages, just for fun. Uh, and that should be like certain diameter, which is diameter uh, 3.2 millimeters. Please watch my video. I explain like kind of details about this test. Um, this um, this is like very common mistake when students do it like by like uh, by themselves. Um, they will like make like very like nice looking sausage like this with the diameter which is like 3.2. But this is still not uh, the right consistency of the soil because we need it like with cracks. So we just we need to dry it up a little bit so that we have all this like cracking here in in the soil. So when we see cracks, that's that's exactly the water content that correlates to the plastic limit. So we will create those little threads, make sure they're cracking here or like you see like like breaks here, and after that we just put them in the oven, and we're going to measure the water content of um, these uh, little threads. And this water content will be plastic limit. So um, liquid limit, we can probably like try to do for sand. It will be like really uh, challenging, but we can do it. But we cannot do plastic limit test for sand because for sand, you're going to get like like really big, big, like thick, like uh, sausages. And that's not a dry diameter of uh, 3.2 millimeters. So this is plastic limit um, test. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry. Um, this is just the data from plastic limit test. We are required to do at least three. <coughs> um, um, we're required to do at least three tests so that we can get the average. Um, because if you do only one test or two tests, sometimes you can uh, get like really like big range. It can be like he may be 21, but what if like this, like second test give us like 28. That's very, very big range. Uh, so we cannot really accept this data. So um, that's why we need to do three. <clears throat> and we also need to, <clears throat> we also need to see that they are more or less um, uh, in uh, in a like, close range. And then we'll take the average out of this, so 23, which uh, reasonable. Um, 47.2 is like the one liquid limit that we uh, I showed you before. And this is going to be a plasticity index for that soil, which is liquid limit minus plastic limit 
uh, 24.2. That's how we do the test. Um, you have any questions? <clears throat> well, I uh, I understand. Maybe it's a little bit difficult for you, just like when I explain this uh, to understand. Uh, that's why we always do laboratory, but uh, this trimester we cannot do that. Um, but please watch the video, and uh, in the video I showed you how it, it just works, like I do the test, like sort of for you. Uh, sorry, I'm drinking a little bit of water. I think um, there is something wrong with my voice. Um, okay. Uh, um, I'm not sure we have time to do this kind of practicing. Um, this is again, uh, well, this is what you practice by yourself for your second project. Um, I'll probably uh, maybe just leave it for you guys to do that. What I can do, I can uh, um, upload uh, maybe a little bit of. Uh, um, I have a, I have a slide with the answers. So what I would like you to do is um, when you have time, doesn't have to be like today or like any time soon, but um, if uh, it would be good if you can do it uh, before next Friday when we have uh, our like laboratory um, quiz three next Friday, no this Friday. So just maybe try to get like one or two points by yourself. So this is just uh, how you calculate moisture content. Remember, it's uh, mass of uh, water divided by mass of uh, solids. And this is also something uh, like moisture content test. So this is moisture content that you, you already practiced, and you'll practice even more. So well, I just do it because this is like very common thing in uh, geotechnical engineering. Uh, we need to find moisture content or water content. So this is the data from one of the tests uh, that I found yesterday. I just wanted to show you uh, this is going to be the uh, water content. In this case, um, I think it's one of these um, uh, tests that we did for Queensland Trail. But yeah, that, that was one of those like plastic soils. So we, we, got, we did about five tests for plastic limits. And we got actually a good range. Um, you see, it's like from 32 to 33, and that was average that we use. And then we also did uh, five tests uh, for um, liquid limit. You see that for this test, we got 55 uh, below count. Usually, like when you start, it's very difficult. Uh, I told you, remember, it should be like from 30 to 40, ideally, but we just couldn't get it. I mean, it's uh, like nothing is perfect. So I think the soil was like not like like wet enough to get it in that range first, but we did get one 55, then 36, 23, 20, 14. So we get a good range. We plotted it um, and plotted it in Excel. Uh, this one again, don't forget log scale. And then uh, you get for 25 blows here. 25 and that would correlate to I think it will be almost 79 or something 79 79.5 so this is what you get some students have uh, some reason they get the average between this one so no average no average that's wrong you get 25 blows from here click 25 blows uh, and then if you need you just get um, a plastic index so that's how it works Pretty simple, but just make sure that you don't make mistakes with water content. Um, this one, you probably remember how to use this one, right? Um, you'll be asked on Friday to um, classify soil. Uh, and uh, this plasticity chart, it's an um, important part of the classification. Uh, you, you'll be asked to do it using Ashto and also using uh, unified soil classification system. So practice both. Just give you some uh, uh, hints. Um, you guys already know how we use it, right? So we use here liquid limit, and here we use plasticity index PI. Uh, this is a mathematical expression of this uh, A line. What we can do, we can see if it's above or below, or we can see 
uh, for some classification, it asks you if plasticity index is uh, higher than 0 0.73 LL minus 20. So it means above. So plasticity is not. Okay, I'm not going to talk about it now because you've already done this a lot. Um, just talk about shrinkage. Um, we have like a few minutes left. Um, and then I'll ask you to watch the video. So uh, shrinkage limit. Um, uh, remember how I talked to you when we increase water content, it will come from uh, like uh, solid state to plastic state and then liquid state. So now what we're going to do right, right now, let's say we have a soil which is uh, already have lots of water here. And then we will start drying it. So we'll dry it, water content will decrease. And as water content decreases, we will see that it will shrink, right? It will, because we, we remove water, so particles come closer to each other. And then we just keep uh, drying the soil. We will still see that uh, there is change in the volume. Volume will decrease. And at some point, we will notice that, well, we still dry it. We make it dry, but there is no change in the volume. So it's constant. So this point. So this is what we call shrinkage limit. So even though we dry up even more, there is no change in the volume. So it's not shrink, it doesn't shrink anymore. So this is what we need to know. This is good, uh, what we call shrinkage limit. Shrinkage limit is important again. Um, I showed you, remember, um, how we define reactive soil. And shrinkage limit is one of the variables that we check for soil to make uh, to see if it's reactive or not. Um, the test is pretty simple. I think it's one of the best tests that students really like. Um, what we do is we just use the soil, uh, soil at its liquid limit. So if I do liquid limit test, we will know that liquid limit, for example, in that soil was 49.5. Remember that we I showed it before. So what we do next is uh, we have a mold, and it's like as simple as this one. Um, and uh, we just uh, have soil with water content at 49.5. And then we put this soil in this uh, mold. Just put it in the mold. And that's it. So that's how it works. And then we just like leave it uh, on the table, on the desk, uh, so that it will dry naturally. So why it's natural, uh, maybe take about a week or something, you will see that um, it became like this. It shrinks, right? So if soil is really plastic and very reactive, it's going to shrink a lot. So it will change its volume. If soil it's kind of like mm, just normal, maybe not like too much. And then what we do is we just look at the ratio between the uh, initial size, this one is H initial, maybe zero, and this one, which is, uh, I'm gonna call it H1. We just um, see the, the ratio, that's it. So, and that's how we define this uh, shrinkage limit. Uh, the thing that you need to remember which is very practical. Uh, maybe I'm not going to test it in the laboratory quiz, but very practical. Uh, you don't need to put it in the oven to dry. So because what is going to happen with the, like when you put it in the oven, when you dry it too quickly uh, under high temperatures, um, you will see uh, the mold, but your soil is going to have this arch. Uh, it's going to look like this. Kind of, well, not exactly like that, but gonna have this arch. Um, it's because like the way that you dry it very quickly on the high temperature. So that's why we don't put it in the oven. So we just leave it on a, like on a, on a table and let it dry naturally. So in this case, there is not going to be any uh, deformation of the soil sample when it dries naturally. And um, this is the formula. 
uh, this is uh, this is the mold that's how it looks like pretty simple we just fill it with uh, soil all the way to the top so we use um, water content which is equal to liquid limit and we don't dry it and then we just have original uh, length uh, deduct dried length and divide by the original length and that's going to give us percentage so if we have very reactive soil we will have like very high um, this linear shrinkage if uh, soil is like normal not very plastic then that linear shrinkage is going to be like maybe one or two percent even less if it's like really like very plastic and reactive maybe it can be like 10 percent i think we when we tested that soil can be like 15 or even 20 percent that's like a lot uh, okay so that's it for today's laboratory and i finish on time which is very good um i'm happy to take your questions if you have any please let me know if you have uh, no questions uh, i would like to thank you guys for joining this laboratory session um then get ready for your friday uh, quiz uh, it's gonna be it's not gonna be as easy as your like laboratory quizzes just to like um i mean it's not gonna be like very hard but it's not going to be as um, like not not going to be like that kind of um, uh, laboratory questions. Um, does the online quiz one cover the lab one three? Um, it's um, the things. Well, it's not going to be. There is nothing about like testing procedure, but there will be questions about compaction. Like you have compaction curve. And you'll be asked to uh, calculate either uh, like water content, air content, or things like that. Um, but this is again something that we did in the lectures. Uh, you'll be asked to uh, classify soil, and we did it in lectures and uh, I think second laboratory uh, soil classification. Uh, there will be questions about soil constituents. Uh, we did it in tutorials. Um, and uh, there will be some like general questions about uh, geology soil origin uh, things like that so i mean some parts but well something that we have done till like last week and this week that will be in the quiz what type of software could we use to plot the geotechnical cross section for project um well um, typically like any software geotechnical software it's um like you have to pay money um the one that what uh, the one that i would recommend is just like draw by hand some people use excel some people use excel um like to draw but i uh, i don't mind if you just if you know like uh, autocad or things like that like just like drawing just like make sure that uh you have uh, the correct scale the correct scale and all your lines are clear Mm, you 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 don't have to use any software if you don't want to uh, with the quiz how many times you can attempt the quiz so uh, again like the same concept uh, you guys do it on Friday and that's gonna be like your major um, major mark right so I mean like not major <laughs> that's gonna be your, your mark again if you get like less than 50% or for some reason you don't take the quiz uh, you can reattempt it. Um, I don't know. Like last year, I um, gave students as many as, as they like, but I think this time maybe I'll have like two or three attempts. But again, this one, well, because like as many as you like, students just like don't really study. They just like try to get all the answers like by doing it like 20 times, and then um, um, this. Well, I, I will give chances to all you guys if you want to improve your score, but. It's not going to be like more than 50%, just like to like make it fair to those students who get uh, uh, good marks for the first attempt. But then one, well, I, I don't want you to to like fail. So how many theory and calculations are we going to have? Um, theory will be uh, about uh, soil origin, geology. That's more like multiple choice questions. Uh, there will be questions about classification um which you're given soil to classify like curve 
uh, it will be Ash to and um, um, the other unified circuit specification system. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, it will be questions about so constituents uh, where you need to do some calculations. Uh, you'll be questioned about compaction when kind of related to so constituents. Uh, you'll be given a question about uh, stresses. And another question will be about good conditions, which is uh, calculation. So I think you have uh, five calculations or six. Um, so something that we did for each topic, there will be one question. Um, for topics with calculations, like stresses, um, quick conditions, uh, so constituents, compaction, you need to calculate. Uh, then you need to classify the soil. There are two questions. And um, I think there are just a few questions with kind of general, to test your general knowledge and understanding. Altogether, 10 questions. Because uh, can we set the origin zero at our first borehole at the beginning of the airline and we do have to start? Um, well, you, you can do that one. Um, usually we don't set first borehole as a zero because then when you draw your borehole, it's going to be right on your like y axis and it, it doesn't look very nice. You can start, let's say, you can start with um, like negative 10, for example, but you don't need to write negative 10 on the uh, um, x axis. Just like move zero to the right so that it doesn't sit right on the like. Um, and also like your like borehole, uh, I don't think you like borehole like starts with zero. Uh, if we look at any A or uh, like those like cross lines, uh, cross section lines, you have boreholes like more like in the middle of that um, uh, line. So you don't, you, you get like as many points uh, like way that's um, uh, cross section line crosses your elevation, elevation contour lines. So that's how you do it. You don't only get like one, like points from your boreholes only. So like uh, each point where uh, cross section line crosses elevation line, needs to be on the cross-section. So you're probably going to have about 10, question, uh, 10 points. Uh, so we would set the beginning of a line. You, you can do that one, yes. You can do that one. Um, and that's not really, I mean, it's it's up to you. You, you can set this like, let's say, like a negative 10 on the like x axis. Just like don't show like negative 10, just like start. You can like move like zero to the right a little bit if you want. Or you can start with zero, that's okay. Just want to like nice uh, cross section where like you, it's not like like crowded with lots of information and like not like crossed with like many lines. Um, any more questions? Um, okay, if no more questions, then I will have a little bit of a break because I'm going to have a tutorial in five minutes. So I will 